One of the most important aspects of the goal swing is being able to set your wrist and use your wrist correctly in the swing. If you can use your wrist correctly, you're gonna see a huge improvement in your ball strike and your consistency is gonna go through the roof and you're also gonna gain a lot of distance. It's a win-win across the board. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use your wrist correctly and how to set them up. Now, before we dive into the video, we just gotta run through a little bit of terminology. Very, very simple. So with our wrists, we have a neutral position. A neutral position is roughly where there's a tiny bit of cup there, but pretty much everything's in a nice relaxed position, nice straight line right there. If we were to go into what we class as flexion, we would see some bowing to this lead wrist. Imagine you're sort of a, a motorbike. You're on a motorbike, you're turning the handle away from you. That's gonna be putting your wrist into flexion. Now, if we go the other way, if we go into this cupped position, this is called extension. So we have really three wrist positions, neutral, flexion, extension bowed or cupped. So before we get started with actually how I want you to move the wrist, I just wanna also work through a myth that I see a lot of people get wrong. So a lot of people think wrist set is literally hinging both the wrists up, and to a certain degree it is, and to a certain degree it isn't. With the left wrist, the lead wrist, I don't want you to be feeling like you are trying to pull that thumb up towards you, because as we do that, what we find is this is called radial deviation. Essentially, you're bringing your thumb towards you. But this is very much paired with the extension element, the cupping of the lead wrist. Now, as we know, when we pull the thumb up, we go into radial, we get that left wrist extended. What is that gonna do? That's more than likely going to open up the club face. So this is where players actually overset their left wrist. We don't wanna be doing that. So if I was to do that, if I was to pull up massively with the left thumb, we're gonna now see that at the top of the backswing, the left wrist is very much cut. The swing is very long, club face is very open. Now from here, the chain reaction is gonna be very much over the top, club face is open. So that's the only way we can sort of square it. We're gonna to have to throw early extension, the full works, casting, poor contact. It's not a happy place to be. You'll also see when players pull up with this thumb, that as they get to this position here, you can see actually I've gone past this position, I've started to collapse. So quite often we find that the arms collapse in as well. So it's gonna uh, have a lot of issues and knock on effects with your width. So I just wanna make sure that you understand that concept. We're not trying to, with the left thumb, physically pull up. Instead, we are actually trying to push down. So let's go into that now. So let's now dive into actually how we need to move those wrists and how we can keep it as simple as possible. We're gonna focus on the lead wrist, the left wrist for me as a right-handed golfer, and the trail wrist, the right wrist for me as a right-handed golfer. Firstly, the lead wrist, we've just discussed. We don't wanna be physically pulling it up. Now it will naturally set a little bit, but we don't wanna be physically pulling it up. So if we don't want to be pulling up, what do we want to be doing? We actually want to be pushing down. So it's understanding again the physics of the club. If I push down on the handle as I turn, where does that club head go? It goes upwards, right? This is what's going to allow you to start to get that club working back in a nice position. Now, as I do that, as I push down on the handle and set the club up, you can see the club face is matching my spine angle. So we've now taken care of the club face. Amazing. The other thing that it's done is it's gotten the club working upwards in the takeaway. Remember that early example when I rolled it? Do you think I was pushing down on the handle when I rolled it? No. So we want to be going with the left wrist, push down on the grip to set that club up into a nice position right there. And it's a really simple move. It's just the feeling of the palm pushing down on the handle. If I do it from the front of you, just with my left hand only, I'm gonna push down on it. That's gonna get the club coming upwards. And you can see lead wrist is in this very neutral flat position. So if the left wrist is pushing down, the lead wrist is pushing down on the handle, What's the trail wrist doing? Well, in the golf swing, usually our left side and our right side do the opposites. They work against each other in a sense to try and keep that equilibrium. So if the left wrist is pushing down, right wrist has got to pull back on itself. So with the right wrist, if I do right arm only, I want to see you set the club more in sort of the back of the right wrist. As I do that, you can see here that actually now again, that's got that club face match in my spine angle. It's a very simple movement. So really what we're doing with the left wrist is going that way. That's all we're doing. We're pushing down on it slightly. The right wrist is doing that. Can we all do that? 100% we can all do that. Very simple move. And as you can see, it's not a big movement at all. It's maybe an inch with the left hand, an inch with the right hand, but it produces a great wrist set. It gets the wrist conditions in the right spot, club face in the right spot, club working on the right plane. You're then able to generate good width. 
So now if I pair them together, lead wrist is pushing down, trail wrist is setting back on itself. What does that look like? So if I start here, again, I'm just gonna max it in the takeaway just for demonstration purposes, push down, pull up, just like that. You can see how lead wrist is flat, trail wrist has got some extension in it, so it's got some cup and the club face, I'll turn to the downline view in a second, is matching my spine angle. I've got some nice width with the arms. If I do it from this angle, push down, pull up, you can see very nice position right there. Good amount of wrist set, clubs work back on a nice plane, club face is matching spine angle, good width to the arms. Now really, in reality, if I just turn from here to the top, you can see quite a nice top of the backswing position. Club face is maybe squared or slightly closed, which is gonna really benefit you in terms of shallowing the club, but I'm also to keep good width. So if you're a golfer who sees the club face get very, very open at the top, your arms collapse, you get very narrow. This is something that you really wanna put your attention to. And again, it's really simple. Push down with the lead hand, pull up with the trail hand. So the best drill that's gonna help you with this is the stop, check, and go drill. The stop, check, and go drill is amazing because it breaks things down into a manageable piece. Now, if I grab the ball and I bring it to the front on view, what we're gonna do is set up to the golf ball normally. And again, when we're doing this drill, I'd recommend just putting it on a small tee, especially if this is the first time you're doing this or maybe you do struggle with your wrist set. Just gives you that little bit extra margin for error. So let's get set up to this ball. Now, what we're gonna do is we are gonna push down, pull up with the handle as we have a little bit of turn to the chest. And you can see in this position, my arms are still relatively straight. There's a little bit of fold to my right arm, but I'm still in a relatively straight position. Now, I'm gonna stop in this position here. So position two in the goal swing is shaft parallel to the ground. Position three is left arm parallel. We're gonna go somewhere about P two and a half. If you don't know the P's, basically just go to your hands are roughly level with your hips, roughly in that position. So set up to the ball, push down, pull up, stop, we're gonna check it, we're gonna make sure we're in the right spot, we're gonna look back at the ball, and then we're gonna go from there, and we're gonna hit. So what we're doing there is we're stopping, we're checking, we're making sure we're in the right position, we're giving ourselves the green light, we then look back at the ball, and then we hit. I love this drill, like I said, just because it breaks things down into more manageable pieces, and ultimately from there, we're able to learn the swing a lot faster. So if I do it from the down the line view now, so I'm gonna set up to the ball, I'm then gonna go push down, pull up, stop, check it, look back at the ball, and then I'm gonna hit. So let me do that for you now. Again, stop, check, go. That's what we're looking to do here. Set up to the ball, let's see if I can do this. Push down, pull up is my cue. I'm gonna do that right now. Push down, pull up, stop, check it, look back at the ball, go. So there we go, nice sort of solid strike, a little bit thin. So like I said, these drills aren't the easiest in the world. Again, you might not hit it as far as you usually do because we're taking out the momentum, but you'll notice that it will feel a lot shorter, a lot more compact. You'll feel your wrists in different positions. And ultimately from there, this is gonna massively help you speed up your learning process. So we've gone through the element of pushing down with the left hand, pulling up with the right. We've then done the stop and go drill to help us learn that. But what I also wanna do is just run through some good cues for you at the top of the backswing. Because if we can very much set things up to the top of the backswing, that is gonna give us the best possible chance of delivering the club in a great fashion on the way down, improving your golf game, improving your ball striking. So we know we are pushing down with the left, we know we're pulling up with the right, but what are we looking for in terms of the top of the backswing position? Well, when you get your when you get the wrist moving correctly, you're going to see that naturally your arms are go going to want to generate a little bit more width, which is amazing, which is exactly what we want to be happening. As we push down, we notice in this position we flattened off that left wrist and we got some extensions to some cup in that trail wrist. So the weight is really thin like it's set in the back of that trail wrist. If I then take that to the top, again, we've carried that same feeling all the way through. You can see the left wrist is very much in a flat position and the right wrist is very much under the club. It's supporting the club. Now, if we think about what we usually see, we see the opposite. We see the lead wrist cupped, we see the trail wrist straight. So actually we're flipping it over. Now a drill that I love to do, or just, there's not really a drill, but more of just a feeling, is just to do some one arm only swings. And again, you can actually grip down halfway on the club if the club's a little bit heavy, but just get used to pushing down with the left, getting that left wrist flat and turning to the top. Because I've gripped down, it's just made this a lot more manageable. Checking that that left wrist is in that nice flat position, as you then come down, it's gonna make it a lot easier 
easier to square the club face. Then flip it, do it with the right hand only again, grip halfway down just to make it easy. And what I wanna be feeling is that the right wrist is very much under the shaft. I can feel like it's loaded in the back of the right wrist. And from this position here, again, club face is gonna be squared or slightly closed. That's gonna promote the shallowing. That's gonna promote a great impact where you can just turn through. Once you've done that a couple of times, then two hands back on the club. Try and recreate that same feeling, push down, pull up. Right hand's gonna feel underneath, left wrist is gonna feel very, very flat. Again, great analogy. Imagine you're a waiter, you're holding that tray. I don't know why you'd be holding the tray up there, but you're holding that tray up there above your right shoulder. That's gonna really give you that support and ultimately help you get into that good position. So hopefully that makes sense. If you do have any questions about today's video, then please ask away. Absolutely crucial you get your wrist set right. If you do, it'll massively help you with so many different things in your swing. And it's not as complicated as you think. As you can see, just push down with the left, pull up with the right. If you do have any video requests, please drop them down in the comments. And also, if you'd like some one-to-one -one coaching, I do offer online coaching on the Skillist platform. Link is down below. You can get a lesson wherever you are in the world with myself. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you back here soon.